Hello, my name is Matlena. I'm a psychologist working at the Maple Tree Centre. In this video, I will talk about working from home and home-based learning. What many people do not know about me is that my husband and I, we have been home educating our three children for over nine years. Home education is very different from home-based learning, but there's a few things that I've learned over the years that might be helpful for you. What's really important to make this work is to work a, as a team with your spouse. You need to find ways to divide responsibilities that feels fair for both of you. What that division looks like, it's up to you and your spouse. The way my husband and I have created time for both of us to focus on work and making sure that the home life runs relatively smoothly and that the children's education is supervised is by dividing the tasks by days. That means that on certain days I get to solely focus on work, I get uninterrupted time to work and my husband on those days he will take responsibility of what's happening at home and making sure that the children get their work done. And then on days when he gets to focus on work, I will take responsibility for the children's education and life at home. This works for us. You might find different ways of making sure that both of you get uninterrupted time for work, but also that everything else at home keeps on rolling. Another thing that I think is really important is that you create structure to your day. That means you get up in the morning, you have your breakfast, you brush your teeth, you brush your hair, and you ask your children to do the same. And I know that there are home educated children who can stay in their pyjamas the whole day and work from the strangest places and get great work done. But in my experience, most children and most adults need a little bit of more structure and a, more of a routine. So this means that you make sure that everybody has a place to work from, that it's relatively organized, and everybody knows what's going to happen in the day, what the plan of the day is. You have more, far bigger chances of getting something done then. Something that you have probably already noticed is that supervising your children's education requires bucket loads of patience from you. Now is the time to make use of all those de-stressing skills that you have practiced. If you haven't practiced any, now's the time to start googling, finding ones that work for you and practicing them. It's equally important that your children learn to recognize when they are too distressed to focus. So helping your children realize when they are in a place that they can get their work done and when they are too stressed or upset to focus is really an important skill to learn in life. And teaching your children ways to de-stress is equally important. So what to do on those days when Nothing has gone right and you don't really see things getting any better. That's when you need to have a ritual that helps you stop action, repair whatever has happened and restart the day from a clean slate. So when my children were younger, I would use the 10 o'clock snack time as an opportunity to stop, relax and restart. So I'd prepare a snack, call the children downstairs. While they were eating, I would read a book. We would often also talk about the need to restart the day because it hadn't been a great one. And then after we had nourished on our mind, our body and our soul, we would go back to work. So think of a routine or a ritual that allows you 
to just pause for a while, allow everybody to calm down and find some fun as well. So you could have that, you know, snack time when you relax, but you could also just play a board game or have a dance party, do something that's fun and energizing. And then go back to work. Something that you may have noticed, and you might find it quite stressful, is that the younger your child is, the more they will need your presence as they're doing their work. This doesn't mean that you have to sit next to them the whole time. But you will need to regularly check on them, make sure they haven't drifted off, make sure that they're not stuck, and help them stay on track and complete their work. And this applies to teenagers as well. They will need your physical presence less, but it's important to, on a regular basis, check on them, find out what they're doing and whether they need your support or not. If you leave a child on their own for long periods of time, chances are they will drift off and they're not going to be able to bring themselves back to task. What I would like to encourage you to do is to create a culture of appreciation instead of a culture of criticism. That means that you'll be focusing on what's going right instead of what's going wrong. So instead of noticing everything that your spouse or your child or you are doing wrong, start noticing what they are doing right. That's a great way to motivate people to do more things right. It also has a huge impact on the atmosphere at home, what that relationship feels like. If we're constantly expecting criticism from our partner, our parent, or from ourselves, it's not really going to bring about positive energy. The last thing I would like to talk about is to make sure that education does not come in the way of the love in the family. Education is not the same as love of learning. And if you're noticing that your child's education is starting to erode the love that the two of you feel for each other, please rethink the education part, not the love part. In this video, I've only scratched the surface of everything I have learned about supporting my children's education at home. If you have any questions, I would love to answer them. Please email me at Ivanhana at tmtcdubai.com. Stay safe and look after each other.